In this video, we're looking at quadratics that share the same zeros. Now, when we talk about zeros, it's the same thing as x-intercepts. Now, there are two parts to this video. In the first part, we're going to be looking at this equation here. And then in the second part, we're going to complete some examples. Now, we have a special equation which we use here. And for a lot of people, this can be very confusing. What makes this confusing is there are a lot of different pronumerals here. We've got A, X, Alpha, and also Beta, four different pronumerals. So to help you understand what's going on here, let's take a function that actually has numbers in it. Let's take the function f of x equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 6. Now, if I wanted to graph this function, at some point I need to find my x-intercepts, or my zeros. And to do that, I need to factorise the function. In factorised form, it looks like this. f of x equals 2, x minus 1, x minus 3. Now, when we find the x-intercepts, the 2 at left is irrelevant. To find the x-intercepts, all I need to do is look inside the brackets. I can see that I will get x-intercepts at 1 and 3. The reason for that is 1 minus 1 gives me 0 for one set of my brackets, and 3 minus 3 will give me 0 for the other set of brackets. Hence why we call these zeros. If we can make either of these sets of brackets 0, we find our x-intercepts. The question is, how many different functions can I make with the same set of x-intercepts? Let's use Desmos to answer this question. Here I have the function we were just talking about. What would happen if I took that same function and changed the number to the left? Let's change it to a 5. I now have a completely new function which shares the same x-intercepts. So all I need to do is take the same function and just change that number to the left each time. And every time I do that, I get a new function which shares the same x-intercepts. Here I have four different functions all sharing the same x-intercepts. We often refer to this as a family of quadratics. We call them a family of quadratics because they share something in common. They share the same x-intercepts. So how big is this family? How many different functions can we come up with that have the x-intercepts of 1 and 3? Well, you've probably worked out that we can have infinitely many functions in this family. So let's get away from Desmos now. Here I've listed the four functions that we were just looking at, and I've written a note below that there are infinitely many functions that share the same set of x-intercepts. So how does this all relate to the equation we were looking at at the very beginning? Well, if I write this equation above my four functions, you might notice something. We can see that the symbol alpha has been 1 each time, and beta has been 3 each time. So alpha and beta are used to represent the x-intercepts. And to be more specific, when we're talking about a family of functions, alpha and beta will remain the same each time. What will change each time is this pronumeral, the A. So what we're going to do is we're going to be completing four examples. And we're going to use this equation to help us. Because we're going to be given the x-intercepts, and then we need to figure out what A will equal. Here we have to find the equation for each graph below. So let's start with question A. We'll take that special equation, f of x equals a, x minus alpha, x minus beta. Now we've been given our two x-intercepts. They are negative 3 and 2. So at the moment, we don't know what a is but we can say that alpha is negative 3, so it's going to be x minus negative 3. And for beta, it's going to be 2, so x minus 2. 
You'll notice that when we substituted a negative in place of alpha, we ended up with a double negative. That now actually becomes x plus 3, and the x minus 2 stays the same. So to find the equation for the graph, we simply need to figure out what a equals. You'll notice that they've given us a third point here. In fact, this is the y-intercept. And we can see that when x equals 0, y will equal negative 12. So we're going to substitute that into our function here. So x is 0, which means we've now got 0 plus 3 and 0 minus 2. We still don't know what a equals, but we know that when we work this out, it will equal negative 12. And that's because when x is 0, y will equal negative 12. Let's simplify this a little bit. We've got negative 12 on the left. We've got our a. And we're multiplying our a by 3, then by negative 2. That's because 0 plus 3 is 3, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Now 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So we're going to have negative 12, and then we're going to have a times negative 6. And that can be written as negative 6a. Now I've run out of room, so I'm going to rewrite this to the right. I've got negative 12 equals negative 6a. And I'm going to divide both terms by negative 6. That will cancel the negative 6, leaving a on its own. And negative 12 divided by negative 6 is positive 2. So we now know that a equals 2, which is perfect. I have everything that I need. Going back to the original equation we spoke about, we now know that a equals 2. Remember x minus alpha? Well, that became x plus 3. So we'll rewrite that as x plus 3. And x minus beta became x minus 2. So we'll rewrite that as x minus 2. We have now come up with the equation that we needed. In fact, we can check it on Desmos. So we had 2 bracket x plus 3 bracket x minus 2. You will see that we have x-intercepts at negative 3, also at 2, and we can see that it crosses the y-axis at negative 12, which is what we had here. Negative 3 and 2 were our x-intercepts, and it crossed our y-axis at negative 12. Now, it's perfectly fine to leave your function in factorized form. Sometimes you may be asked to express it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, in which case you just need to expand your function. We'll do that for question A, but we're not going to do it for the rest of the questions. So we start by looking at the brackets. x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is minus 2x. Then 3 times x is plus 3x. And finally, 3 times negative 2 will give us minus 6. Now we still need to multiply all of this by 2. We can simplify what's in the brackets. Minus 2x plus 3x becomes 1x. So we get x squared plus 1x minus 6. And finally, we multiply all of this by 2. And we get 2x squared plus 2x minus 12. Now, like I said, either one of these two responses are perfectly fine. It just depends on the question. If they ask you to put it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, then you need to expand your brackets to finish off the question. All right, we need to move on to question B now. So we'll start with a blank slate. Here's our equation. And we can see that our x-intercepts are negative 4 and negative 1. So let's substitute them into our equation here. It's going to be x minus negative 4 and x minus negative 1. Now, when you get this double negative, what you need to do is change it to a plus. So it becomes x plus 4 and x plus 1. All right, so to figure out what a equals, we need to take the third point here where x is 0 and y is negative 4. So when x is 0, we're going to get 0 plus 4, 
and 0 plus 1. And this will equal y, which is negative 4. Now, 0 plus 4 is just 4. So this becomes a times 4 times 1, because 0 plus 1 is 1. And we know that this is going to equal negative 4. Now, a times 4 times 1 equals 4a. So we get negative 4 equals 4a. Let's rewrite this to the right, negative 4 equals 4a. What we need to do now is divide both terms by 4 so that we isolate a. Negative 4 divide 4 is negative 1, so a must equal negative 1. So now we take our equation, except this time we know what a equals. a equals negative 1. And our brackets were x plus 4 and x plus 1. Now we don't usually write negative 1. We usually get rid of that 1. And then we have negative x plus 4, x plus 1. Now as I mentioned before, you can leave your function in this form. It's perfectly fine unless they ask you to write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Let's double check this answer on Desmos. We had negative x plus 4, x plus 1. Let's have a look here. Our two x-intercepts are negative 4 and negative 1, and our y-intercept is negative 4, which is what we had here. All right, let's now move on to question C. Here we have our equation. Our x-intercepts are 2 and 5. So we write down x minus 5 and x minus 2. Now, I've kind of changed the order a little bit um, just to make a point. You'll notice the numbers came in the order 2, then 5, but I changed the order to 5, then 2. It really doesn't matter what order you put them in, and I just wanted to make that point here. Okay, now we need to find a. We've got this y-intercept here where x is 0 and y is 2. So if we make all the x's equal 0, like so, and because our y-intercept is 2, this function will equal 2. We now have a times negative 5, because 0 minus 5 is negative 5, times negative 2, because 0 minus 2 is negative 2. This will all equal 2. Now negative 5 times negative 2 is 10, or positive 10. So we now have 10a on the right and 2 to the left. Now, if you have 10a equaling 2, we can simply divide both terms by 10. And we get a equals 2 over 10 or 1 over 5. Now, we could have also given a response of 0 0.2. We can pick either a fraction or a decimal. We prefer fractions. So now we simply take our equation, we replace a with the fraction, 1 over 5, and we have our brackets x minus 5 and x minus 2. So let's check this function on Desmos. So we had 1 over 5 at the beginning, and then we had x minus 5 and x minus 2. You can see we have the x-intercepts 2 and 5 and the y-intercept 2, which is what we had over here. All right, let's move on to our final question, question D here. Now, this question might confuse some people because it only has one x-intercept. When I have a question like this, I like to imagine it as two x-intercepts that are the same. That means alpha and beta are both 3. So we're going to have x minus 3, x minus 3. So we need to figure out a. We've got our y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 36. That means that our x's are going to be 0, and that my function will equal negative 36. So here we have a times negative 3, because 0 minus 3 is negative 3, 
times negative 3 again. Now negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So we've got negative 36 equaling 9a. So what we need to do here is we need to divide both terms by 9, like so, leaving us with a on the left. So a would then equal negative 4. So we now have our completed function, a is negative 4, and then we have x minus 3, x minus 3. In fact, what we could have written is negative 4 times x minus 3 squared. That's because we had x minus 3 multiplied twice. Let's check this on Desmos. So we had negative 4 at the beginning, negative 4. And then we had x minus 3 squared, like so. Here we have an upside down parabola, which has an x-intercept, a singular x-intercept, where x is 3. And our y-intercept should be negative 36, which it is. Anyway, that concludes our video on example 2. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.